Now, I'll call the member for Sydney to move his motion. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Finally, we get to talk about love. Uh, I move that this House, one, notes members of the New South Wales Parliament and community hold various views on the issue of marriage equality. Two, which is our official... Just one moment. As soon as you mentioned love, they all got stirred up. <laughs> right, continue on now. Which is our federal colleagues a respectful debate that is tolerant of all views. And three, note the importance of MPs being, able to, being free to express their own views and the views of their electorate on this issue. Mr Speaker, the vast majority of New South Wales and the Australian communities have opened their hearts and minds to support the right of LGBTI people to marry the person they love in the country that they love. This is reflected in Crosby Texter polling, which shows 72% of Australians support marriage equality. That figure rises to 75% in New South Wales. The New South Wales Parliament is home to some of the strongest advocates of marriage equality across the political spectrum. The Honourable Penny Sharp continues to be one of the most passionate supporters within the Labor Party. The Honourable Don Harwin, President of the Legislative Council, is considered to be the first Liberal parliamentarian at a state or federal level to publicly support marriage equality when he spoke on the Relationships Register Bill in 2010. The member for Coogee continues to be a strong and effective supporter. The Honourable Trevor Khan was one of the first nationals to declare support for reform. And the Greens Kate Fairman successfully passed a motion supporting marriage equality in the Upper House in the last parliament. My predecessor, Clover Moore, was one of the first Australian politicians to support marriage equality. And this parliament has two members who are in same-sex marriages. Myself, having married my husband in Argentina, and the Honourable Shane Mallard, who married his husband, Jesper, in Denmark. Recently, many, MPs were joined, many of these MPs were joined by the member for Newtown at a rally for marriage equality free vote in Taylor Square in my electorate, which I emceed. We were also joined by Councillor Christine Foster. In my experience, this parliament has always dealt with the issue of marriage equality in a respectful way, as was demonstrated when the cross-party marriage equality working group delivered a same-sex marriage bill to the upper house in the last parliament that was narrowly defeated. I know a number of lower house members from all parties wanted to support the legislation had it proceeded to this house. I also acknowledge the former Attorney General, Brad Hazard, who worked with me to get overseas same-sex marriages recognised in this state relationship register. Mm -hmm. The issue of marriage equality is a live and urgent one for our federal colleagues, and this debate must be respectful and tolerant of all views. Those opposing reform must cease relying on absurd arguments, like it being healthier to smoke than be gay or arguing that letting same-sex adults marry the person they love is a step towards bestiality. The challenge for opponents of reform will be to use facts instead of fear. Children are often used by opponents of reform for unfortunate political point scoring. New South Wales, like many other states, already has same-sex adoption. Children in families headed by same-sex couples deserve the right to have married parents. It's cruel and ignorant to attack same-sex parented uh, families or single-parented families. Study after study proves that what is most important to children is a loving and stable environment. Single parents and same-sex parented families can provide such an environment just as much as other couples. Mm -hmm. It's important to highlight that advocates of reform have always been respectful to the differing views of religious bodies and have ensured that any proposed legislation does not force clergy to marry a same-sex couple if they do not want. The international experience for countries who have embraced reform is that marriage is valued as a celebration of commitment and love between two adults is improved. Indeed, statistics by the US uh, Census Bureau show that those states that allow same-sex marriage have lower divorce rates than those that don't. Recently, it was the dying wish of Australians uh, Lee Branson and Sandra Yates um, uh, to marry in New Zealand. Not everyone can wait for marriage equality, and this is why the reform is urgent. Our federal colleagues must be given the freedom to vote according to their own values and the views of their electorates on this important issues. In response to my first question to Premier Baird, he stressed the importance of conscience votes and paid tribute to the leadership of the former Premier Barry O'Farrell in granting free votes. I call on the Prime Minister to show the same leadership. Many federal MPs have surveyed their electorates and found strong support for reform amongst their constituents. These include the member for Solomon, Natasha Griggs, and the member for Page, Kevin Hogan. Indeed, it's estimated that up to 20 MPs uh, of the federal coalition government are likely to support reform. It's untenable for coalition MPs like the member for Wentworth, the member for Higgins, or the member for Brisbane to say they support reform but can't vote for it. 
The Liberal Party says it is the party of individual freedom and a free vote should be the default position on this issue. The longer this is delayed, the longer we fall behind our closest allies like the USA, the UK and New Zealand. But more importantly, we must no longer allow same-sex couples to be treated as second-class citizens and show respect to an institution that should be about love, not discrimination. I commend the motion to the House. Yeah.